fun with diddles simple concepts but endless possibilities and applications if you're ready then i'm ready are you ready chin jaime rita joel dave you guys ready because i'm ready i'm waiting for you are you ready i'm ready I, what are we doing Hey everyone, welcome back to another Jazz Drummer Q-Tip of the Week. My name is Quincy Davis. If you're new, thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you'll enjoy this lesson enough to press that like button. And please consider subscribing because I put out a lot of videos and lessons that I think you'll find helpful. All right, so those of you who follow me probably already noticed that I'm on a bit of a different setup than I normally am. Normally I have my jazz drums out, my jazz sizes uh, much smaller. Uh, but here I am on a funky kind of kit that uh, I was using for another project, and I thought it'd be perfect for this lesson, actually. So I left it set up. Um, and actually, for a future video, tell me what you think about this idea of doing a compare and contrast uh, video of these drums, more of a funk kit, and my jazz setup. So I play something on the funk kit, and then I'll play something on the jazz kit, just to hear the, the, the contrast in the sounds and the feeling of the two different kits. Tell me if you think that's a good idea. Let me know down below. Summer is here and I am again offering lessons for the summer, just for the summer. So if you are interested in studying with me, taking some lessons, the link is down below. There's a lot of different options for whatever suits your interest. Um, but I advise you to do it quickly because spots will fill up fast. All right, jumping into this lesson, four simple diddle concepts that will make your funk funkier. Um, if you haven't seen the last video, you don't need to watch that to, to watch this video. However, I advise you after you watch this lesson to watch that lesson. Also, there are there's a free PDF that kind of goes hand in hand with the previous lesson that I think you'll find also helpful for this lesson. OK, but getting into this lesson. Um, it's all about the funk, okay? And how can we use diddles uh, to make our funk funkier? The first concept is to count out loud. What? Count out loud? Yeah, count out loud. Um, it's going to help your internal sense of groove and s internal clock, your internal sense of time. And that's essential when you're playing when you're playing anything, really. Um, so I'll give you an example. Paradiddles. And by the way, well, I'll get into that later. But here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 One. Two, three, four, one simple right not too difficult now it's when we get into the later concept of displacing those diddles those paradiddles that it gets a little trickier to count but in general if you can work on counting while you play your ideas it's going to make your ideas kind of sit more into in the grid whatever you play because you're feeling what you're playing or you're playing you're feeling the pulse better um, and it's just going to help your overall sense of, of groove and and uh, your idea of what is happening with the time. So I encourage you to just count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And have fun with it. Concept number two, displace your diddles with the bass drum. So this is where it gets trickier to count out loud, but I still want you to try to do it. Okay, so I'll demonstrate what that would sound like. So you can displace the, your, your diddles with either one note in the bass drum or two notes in the bass drum. First, we'll start out with just one note. 
I'm just using paradiddles, but you can apply this to paradiddle diddles and double paradiddles. So here we go. Uh, one measure of paradiddles, then we're going to displace it with the bass drum with one note, then we're going to play one measure again, essentially. We'll call it one set. Okay, so one, two, three, four, bass drum, and then, and then we're going to play the whole set again, bass drum. Okay? Uh, essentially, that works out to be 17 notes, which that's why it's tricky to count. But this is what it sounds like in time. Never lose the sense of one of, of the pulse. That's key. Two, three, four. One, 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 two, three, four. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And also, you want to make sure that you come out on beat one, okay? No matter where you are in the uh, whatever partials you're playing off of, you always want to come out to beat one, okay? That way, it forces you to organize your hands and organize your get out scheme. You got to have a good get out scheme. Uh, getaway. That's that's what they call it in the action films. You got to have a good getaway um, in order to make sure you you're not getting off. You're not losing your your sense of uh, the quarter note or the pulse. Okay, so it's like, and you should feel comfortable to come out on that side or that side, right? So there you go. Displace it. That's displacing the paradiddles with one note in the bass drum. What about two notes? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, ooh. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? And I was putting it into a four measure construct or form to keep myself honest, right? So we can kind of get off into the displacement aspect with, with, but losing our wherewithal with where we are in the form or a certain amount of measures, phrasing, right? So, so I would recommend doing that. Whatever you practice, make sure you say, okay, I'm gonna put this in a four measure form or an eight measure form, and then make sure you get out on the what? downbeat that's very very important either here or there okay so there you go displace your diddles with the bass drum either one note in the bass drum or two notes in the bass drum have fun okay so this is kind of concept uh 2a let's let's say okay um instead of placing the bass drum in between your diddles play your bass drum with your hands at times. So it would be like this. And so it'd be like. You see what I'm doing? And then, so you can kind of add the bass drum at random, whatever feels the funkiest, honestly. So that's kind of what I'll do. Right? Especially when you Especially when you displace it, it gets very 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 funky, very funky. By the way, you can also add your bass drum to ideas and diddle ideas around the kit. It doesn't just have to be You can go See what I'm doing? And then you and then you couple it with the idea of filling in uh, the holes with the bass drum. It gets really interesting when you when you're kind of playing with those two concepts. Okay, so have fun with the bass drum, integrating it with these diddle concepts. Concept number three. 
this is crucial, and it's not just limited to when you're playing diddles. It's whenever you're playing anything. Accents, accents, accents. They are so important. I think of accents uh, as a word that's synonymous with attitude. The more you play your accents, the stronger you play them, the more attitude you're going to kind of impart whatever you're playing into whatever you're playing, okay? So play your accents strong. That's concept number three. You can see. You see it? You can see how strong I'm playing them, right? And it may seem like I'm playing really loud, but what's what's making it sound not so loud is the touch, but also the, the contrast of the accents and the non-accents. In funk, it's so important that you have these kind of ghost notes um, going on underneath to add feel. It's not to add anything other than just feel. Um, and extra vibe, I guess you could call it. So, but notice the accents. So even that's how you should practice on the snare drum. No different when you when you go to play it in a groove, right? Paradiddles. Okay, and also notice in the snare drum, this is really important. My accent in the snare drum is actually a rim shot. It's not just on the on the in the middle of the drum. So what happens is when you play an accent in the snare drum, it actually sounds like a backbeat that's being moved around and displaced, which makes it sound what? Funky really funky right uh, I can't play anything right now you see what I mean every time I hit that accent I'm really trying to get that sound um, adds a lot more attitude and funky funkiness Concept number four. All right. This is, a, this is a fun one. Play your ideas open-handed, right? We get used to playing funky and funk like this. But what about this? Or? So I'm just going to play some ideas like this. All right. Oh. Whoa. And then you see what happens is now your hands are open, so you can actually access the toms e even easier than if you're if you're constantly crossing. Practice it; it's really fun. There's the lesson. Four simple ditto concepts that will make your funk funkier. These concepts are really simple, 
But obviously, you can go crazy with them and make them as complicated, as complex as you want. And of course, come up with your own applications and approaches. Therein lies the fun with this. So have fun with them. If you're interested this summer in studying with me, um, the link is down below. Take advantage of that if, if that interests you. Uh, spots are going to fill up fast, so I advise you to do it right away. Otherwise, have fun with this. As always, practice hard, but make sure you practice smart, okay? Catch you next time. Bye-bye.